And now for something completely different. Here's what's coming up this hour on today's experience. It's fantastic, phenomenal, always fun, usually somewhat fascinating Friday as we head into the weekend, not being afraid even if the earth gives way or the mountains fall into the seas because our help comes from the Lord. First, let's understand the simplicity of Jonah's story because of his flawed theology, Jonah does something really foolish, something that's often true for us as well. He actually thought he could outrun God's presence. He believed he could slip away and not be seen by the Almighty. Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. That is just not happening. Next, we're going to jump into Jonah chapter 2. This is going to be fun in Jonah today. Verse 7 through 9, even Jonah acknowledges that he will sacrifice to the Lord with a voice of thanksgiving. Now, I want you to imagine this. Being in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights with seaweed wrapped around your head and knowing you can die at any moment. Would you still thank God continuously? Jonah does. Acknowledging that salvation comes from the Lord and that thanksgiving is what is called for. Wow. Finally, in Jonah chapter 3, so so we're going to progress all the way through this. Verse 1 and 2, God tells Jonah to go. After everything he's been through, guess what? Jonah is a bit more responsive this time when God tells him to do something. You know, you ever wonder why God allows you and I to go through trials more than once? Because eventually, we start to get it and understand. And guess what? We become more responsive. So let's buckle up and face it together, little campers. Let's do it for God. David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing. Nice. Politics, entertainment, and current events. Personal revelation, spiritual observations, my life's insanities, and oy vey, so much more. Now, remember... As we have told you, and we are going to talk to the rocket scientist of radio authority. Now, we tell you it's not professional radio, but we need to talk to the rocket scientist of professional radio, and that's Jammin Jacob. Jammin Jacob, as the rocket scientist in regards to actual, bona fide, genuine professional radio. The rocket scientist is the David Spoon Experience professional radio. Well, according to my calculations, no, it is not David. <laughs> very good response, Jake. Very, very good. Uh, it is not. That is it. That's the final word. I mean, once you have a rocket scientist tell you, isn't it over? Isn't that it? Isn't that the conversation? He said it's not professional radio. Right, he is. Okay. What is it? It's an opportunity to connect. That's what it is. It's some teaching. It's some sharing. It's fellowship. It's crying. It's laughing. It's being ridiculous. It's hoping. It's trusting. It's laying it out there. It's asking others to help. It's living the Christian life. It's loving one another. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, by your love one for another. Okay. That's it. So we're asking you, what do you think? Now, you can email us, david at hemustincrease.org. That's david at hemustincrease.org. You can text us, 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. Or you can call us, 972-445-0770. That's 972-445-0770. 
And when you call 972-445-0770, well, you will end up talking to the aforementioned rocket scientist, our very own Jammin' Jacob. <laughs> Talking to Jim and Jacob is like heading into the weekend. I, I should have grabbed a like Rocket Man or something to play as my <laughs> intro real quick. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to say, so it's kind of like on the. Co- I didn't know what I was going to say one minute before I said it, so it's kind of like we just go with it. <laughs> anyway, any big plans this weekend? Do you have to work? Uh, no, I do not have to Congratulations. work. Congratulations. Uh, it's my brother's birthday, Sunday, so Sunday we're going to go out to eat and you know, spend some time with the family, but other than that, yeah, just, re- just relaxing for a couple of days. Very, very nice. Very nice. That's your, it's your younger brother, right? Is that right? Or is that the older? What was that? Is it your younger or older brother? A uh, younger brother. You yeah. have, you have, how many siblings do you have? I have two. I'm the oldest. And you're the eldest. See that, folks? That's called a young family. <laughs> And you're the you're the youngest, right? I'm the youngest in my family. Yeah, most of my families. <laughs> I'm the only one still talks in sentences. Anyway, uh, we'll just move on from there right now and maybe discuss that another time. Uh, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is why would you contact us? Why would you call us? Why would you text us? Why would you email us? Simple. We'll pray for you. You need prayer? We'll pray. Wait, Gary, call in. Why? Because he needs prayer, and we pray for him. And you think, well, how does that get answered? I don't tell God how to answer prayers. I think that's dumb. I don't think I think the way you do it is you present it with the, to the Lord with faith. You have to believe He's going to do it, or there's no point in praying. But you also surrender it because you know He's sovereign; He's in charge. And you petition. So if you got a prayer request, bring it. If you got a praise report, bring it. This is your opportunity. Don't say, "Well, I never had an opportunity to share." That's not true. You have an opportunity to share on the show. It doesn't have to be brilliant. Just share it. People will be blessed by it. You could even have something you just want to share, like a scripture. Something's going on. Cool. I did break one of my rules earlier in the teaching. I talked a little bit about politics. I don't typically do that, but, eh, you know, every once in a while you just got to say, hey, this is just absolutely absurd, right? That's what happened there. Oh, we also do Bible trivia. Let's see if you guys can do this one. Uh, Exodus 15.2 or Psalm 28.7, either one of those. Did you hear what I said? So either one of these, Psalm 28.7 or uh, Exodus 15.2. The Lord is my strength and, okay, got to fill it in. The Lord is my strength and, Psalm 28, 7, or Exodus 15, 2, if you think you know the answer, 972 445 0770. That's 972 445 0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. Or, or you can send an email, david at he must org. So if you look at the references, okay? In fact, I'm going to pull up the reference because I don't want anybody to, you know, I want to, I know it's not my desire to mislead anybody, but. You know, sometimes you pull these things out of books, and sometimes they're less than perfect. But the Lord is my strength, and the best thing I can tell you as a hint would be almost— uh, nope, that's exactly the right reference, Psalm 28.7. The best thing I can give you is think of Captain America and what he uses in his uh, in his Captain America-isms. <laughs> that's a nice way to do that, right? Is that is that good? <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Think of the armor of God. Now, see? See? Now you're getting all these good hints, right? Now the hints are coming in. The Lord is my strength and blank. Psalm 28, 7. Or I think Exodus 15, 2 might also be there for that. I'm trying to give you that reference point so you can use it. That's my stall. That's all I can do. Somebody is ready to answer the trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hi, David. This is Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm all right. I'm doing fine. Okay. I'm I'm hot, but you know. 
<laughs> what? What? Is it hot out? I had no, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's a little warm, yeah. It's a little warm. I mean, if you're used to Alaska, this is probably not helping. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. This is probably not I was there a few months ago, and yes, it's very different up there. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Let me set you up, and I hope the hints okay. were helpful. Here we go. Uh, from Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my song. Okay, now, if you were Captain America and you were trying to protect yourself, what would you use? What did he have? Do you remember A what shield? he used? That is correct, yeah. Amanda! And it is also from Exodus, I think, 15, 2 is my song, right? So it's my it strength is my and my song, song yes. and my I shield. I have it hanging here in my car. So. See, well, that's a good <laughs> reference then. You probably are like going, yes, I got that. That's good. So, I got that one. That's good. That's so funny. Strength and shield or my song. Either one of those is good. But I went with the shield one because you didn't want to hear me go, la, 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 la. I thought that would be a bad idea for people to try and get a hint. So I just went with the Captain America shield mentality. I, so I give I give give music lessons if you're interested so yeah <laughs> excellent job can we pray over you yes sir all right let's pray father we come before you right now we lift up our sister she's a she's a wonderful addition to our show we just thank you for her she's such a blessing and lord we are asking you lord to give her victory in her life in her house in her household and the people she's connected to that you would not only protect her but that you would watch over her, give her wisdom and discernment. And, Lord, I'm praying something specifically for her, that she would have high favor in the things that she puts her hands to, that you would grant her high favor, Lord, highly favorable from your hand, and that there would be peace that would cover and protect her continually. Watch over her. Keep her safe. Keep those around her safe. And give her that peace that passes all understanding. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Welcome. And that was an excellent <laughs> job. So very, very good on your part. Okay. All thank right. You. God bless you. Uh, you too. Bye. Bye. All right. So I, I was going for the shield one. I, you know, sometimes I do the questions dumb. That doesn't matter. I got to do this teaching. Listen, this is really important. Ready? I love this. This is really cool. This is me. <laughs> Reason to teaching four teachings out of Jonah. This is me. I know you guys are thinking, no, he doesn't do that. Yes, I do. Jonah one three. Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Yappa. He found a ship that was going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went down to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So my first statement in this for myself and for you is bad theology leads us to do dumb things. So here's Jonah, I always find this amazing because what happened when Jonah rose? So the Lord said, go do this. And Jonah said, see ya. That's what he did. He fled to Tarshish, right? He gets to Yapa. He finds a ship. I find it fascinating that he's running from the Lord. And in the beginning, it seems like it's going his way. It's like he actually found a ship trying to go to where he's trying to get to. And it seems like, oh, I'm getting away. I'm getting away with this. And it's almost as though the Lord goes, uh, I'm going to let you have a little string here, and then I'm going to dangle you by your ankle. <laughs> so he's, he runs from the presence of the Lord. He actually thought, ironically, he could flee from God's presence, which was absurd. He's a prophet. He knows better. He knows better, right? Except... Besides Jonah being a silly goofball and you and I uh, being uh, not that far off in some of those things, you have to consider that what we have done in response to God's calling in our lives, sometimes our response is a little more self-directed, self-oriented, self-preserving, self-gold, not really saying, yes, Lord, but going, well, I'm not doing that. I just imagine if the Lord did appear to 100 people who were genuine Christians, and he said, I want you to go here and do missions for the rest of their life, I, want, I don't know, I wonder how many would go, right away, let's do it, Lord. Or how many would go kicking and screaming? 
This is what that is. It wasn't that Jonah didn't believe. Of course he believed. Of course he was a he was a prophet of God. He knew exactly what was going on. He just thought he can escape. <laughs> I'm gonna get away from this. And the Lord's like going, No, you're not. Yeah, keep going. It's gonna look like it's going fine. It's not going fine. And so ultimately my my response to this in the very beginning of Jonah is we do dumb things because sometimes our theology puts us in the back circle. And by, by the way, to, if you want to know what some of those dumb things are, uh, we're not the only ones who do this. Abraham did this dumb thing. He's uh, agreed to what his wife said, and they had Ishmael. It wasn't like God didn't know it was going to happen, but that child, Ishmael, was not the promise of God. And so they created an Ishmael trying to do it for God. And we've been all paying ever since, just in case you're wondering. So if you think of it in those terms, it's like we do things like that, not because we're trying to irritate God, but we're trying to change the course, per se, or that we think we can get away with it, or we think we can dodge it. And it's like all of that to say the answer is no. And we had better learn at some point the answer really just needs to be yes, Lord. And the first time around, yes, Lord. Get that? All right. Take a short break, then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. This KAAM radio show with your very own David Spoon is not a business, but a nonprofit ministry first and foremost committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and strategically equipping the saints. Our mission is to educate, encourage, and entertain Christian believers, the hurting, and those not yet believers who need biblical truths. To continue our radio ministry and message of truth, we need many of our faithful listeners to support us, as well as ministry partners who might wish to sponsor the He Must Increase ministry. By giving, you wonderfully facilitate our priorities of assertively teaching the Word of God, and you get nothing in return. No quid pro quo, nothing but a receipt at the end of the year indicating you gave to us since your donation is 100% tax deductible. Remember that it says in Corinthians that whoever sows generously will also reap generously, or in Proverbs where it teaches that a generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. But if you cannot give, no problem. Continue to enjoy and learn and give however you see fit whenever you can. To support us, go to hemustincrease.org. That's hemustincrease.org. Such support is terribly appreciated, knowing it enables our beloved David Spoon to give to all of us his time, energy, like so few can. Right here on KAAM. What is the David Spoon experience? Because what we're getting is this snapshot of Jesus. And there's a lot of stuff that we do, a lot of stuff that we say, but at no point should anybody ever lose what's going on here. And when we get into our Philippians teach tomorrow, you're going to see how very specific Christology, the study of Christ, fits into play on Jesus Christ being honored uh, above all and understanding how that this snapshot of Jesus plays into or leads us into the understanding of the superiority of Christ. Nobody else was fully God and fully man, period. And so nobody else can represent God to man or man to God. So in this situation, we get to see that Jairus, he has a 12-year-old daughter. She's dying. Not, uh, not good news. This woman who's got this bleeding issue, issue of blood, she comes up to Jesus, uh, touches him without saying anything. Jesus has restoration and healing for her in physical, social, and psychological aspects, which is just uh, wonderful if you think about how Jesus, Jesus cares about the whole person. Doesn't care about a part of a person. Cares about every inch of you. If you're doing well physically, but you're not doing well psychologically, Jesus cares about that. If you're doing well psychologically and not doing well physically, Jesus cares about that. If you can't have contact with people and you feel like you're completely isolated, Jesus cares about that. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other oh, welcome back. To the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Here you go. 
Here's your next trivia question. Paul told Timothy to take something for his stomach's sake. What was it? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. That is your trivia question. If you think you know the answer to the trivia question, you can call 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. Paul told Timothy to take something for his stomach's sake. What was it? First Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. In the meantime, we'll do our DNA. D stands for draw closer to the Lord. Daily. I don't know how to explain this any better, but every day that you wake up, spend time with the Lord. <laughs> I guess that's as good as I can say it. There you go. And never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. Right? Luke 9, 26. If you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you when I come in glory with my with the Father. Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is the truth. Jesus' words is the truth. In John 1, 1, we already talked about this. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus is the word of God. And anybody who's ashamed of that is going to be in trouble. And people who say they know Jesus but don't know the word of God are in the wrong planet. Just get it. It's just as plain as can be. You cannot know Jesus Christ, the biblical Jesus Christ, the way that you are called to by rejecting the biblical account of Jesus Christ. Can't be done. Sorry. Impossible. So here's the bottom line. The bottom line is simply you're never ashamed of what Jesus had to, sh- had to say. He, he created the universe. The dude can write a book. Hello. So draw closer to the Lord daily, D, never be ashamed of Jesus or his words, N, and A, always be ready. To serve. To serve. Okay, so here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, and listen, I'm not trying to be mean today. I did have a good workout yesterday, so. Give me a little bit of it. But any uh, first time I jogged in a long time. Uh, anyway, bottom line is simply this. You're just ready to serve. That doesn't mean you're ready to pounce. I don't sit here and do the show and think, oh, who can I jump? I can jump down this person's throat or this person. That's not how we do this. We just go as things come across in our path, as things and different elements come across our path. And the bottom line is you got to be ready. And sometimes you're ready to say the kindest of words. And sometimes the Lord will have you share a warning. And sometimes the Lord will have you be just so supportive. And sometimes it will have you be partway supportive. In some way, it's this and some way, this. There is no one thing. You are ready for the Lord, whatever he wants, for you to be his servant. That's what we're called to. So D, draw closer to the Lord daily. And never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. And A, always be ready for whatever he wants. Always be ready to serve. Okay. Somebody is ready to answer a trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? God bless you, uh, David. This is Fred. Hello, Fred. How are you doing, my brother? I'm doing fine, sir. Awesome. I'm very, very glad to hear that. Okay. Classic question. Classic, class, straightforward answer. Here we go. I'll set you up. Paul told Timothy to take something for his stomach's sake. What was it? This is probably one of the most controversial issues in the church world, but it said wine for thine often affirmative. That is correct, Amundo, sir. And 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 I, I know most I know most of us, a lot of people struggle with this about the wine thing, but God made wine. God made wine. He made the alcohol. The alcohol. I asked it. The scripture, Psalms 104, verse 15, explains it. But there are many thousands of, of ways to use uh, alcohol instead of getting drunk. Um, but God made it, and He made it for for man's use, for man's good. Every time God made something, He said it was good. So yes, we have wine. God made it, but He made it for specific righteous ways to use it, other than getting drunk. 
Yeah, I think I think the key in that text that people do miss oftentimes is it says use a little wine. It doesn't say. A little, yeah, yeah. It doesn't Excellent. say. It yeah, doesn't a say. A little wine. I don't think. <laughs> use six boxes of wine. It doesn't really say that, you know. But <laughs> yeah. now, now, what's funny? I don't think it says boxes. No, yeah, uh, right. Not six boxes. And I think it's funny because people get really upset about it. And I understand, and I try to. Su- to like be supportive on, on different sides because that's for me certainly not a fellowship if true. But but I always found it amazing that Noah planted that vineyard, right? Got drunk. Okay, yeah. we're, we're going to talk about that in like the, about two weeks. He got drunk. But Noah, and yeah, the, the whole thing with Ham and Shem and Japheth and the right, whole thing, right, right? Right. But nobody said to Noah, hey, <laughs> what? What did you do? I mean, it's like it's like the one guy that the, nobody really said much. It's like, I think he's been through enough. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know what? And that's something that Jesus said to me. I might want to pay attention to Jesus drinking wine with him in paradise. What kind of wine is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. <that's, laughs> excellent job, my brother. Fe- just All right, fab- God fabulous. All right. Go. All right. God bless you. <laughs> Oh, Fred, what a blessing. All right. Fred's our Fred's our guy. He's just such a blessing. Just really an encouraging guy. All right. Now I want to go right into this. We're not I'm not done yet, so just stay stay with us. Okay. Okay, stay with me. All right. We just talked about Jonah running. Like, ha ha ha. Never forget this. I actually have a sermon called uh God Has a Better Pair of Sneakers. It's a great it's a great sermon. It and it's great because it's true. God can run better than you. Stop that. In other words, you can't outrun him. But then it, this next thing happens, and I find this to be absolutely amazing. There's are two verses in Jonah. Jonah 1.17, and the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. Okay, stop right there. And then chapter 2, verse 1, it says this. And so you're going to just read the book of Jonah. Jonah 1.17, the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2, verse 1, then... It's unmistakable, by the way. It's not you something somebody added in. It's not. It's right there in the Hebrew. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the stomach of the fish. Okay, so just, just listen. To this. Just listen to this. Okay, just stay with me here for a second. So, I want to try and keep this as real as possible. This is one of the things that we do, and I find it amazing. First, let me just address this real quickly. People are like, Jonah, that's not a real story. Bill O'Reilly said, that's not a real story. Bill O'Reilly's wrong. He did, Jesus quoted the, story, the, the whole element of Jonah as a prophet, he called him, in Matthew 12, 40. So uh, as much as I like Bill O'Reilly or liked him in the past, when he said Jonah wasn't a true story, he's wrong. He's just another person that just doesn't recognize that God can write a book. It's just so so absurd. He can write a Bill O'Reilly can write a book. God can't write a book. Okay, sure. All right. Anyway, here's the thing though. It's a true story. It's true happening. It's a true element. That's not even what's in the big thing about this to me. To me, it's the guy, Jonah, he's in the fish. What? Verse 17. Jonah was swallowed by the swallowed Jonah. Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. How long? Three days and three nights. How long? Three days and three nights. Chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord. I just, you just got to just think about that. What do you mean, then he prayed to the Lord? After he was in the fish three days and three nights, then he started his prayer discourse. So, so we can all understand, and some people have even, the conjecture is, is incredible. Like he must have been unconscious or something like that. First of all, why didn't Jonah pray when the fish grabbed his first leg? Can anybody tell me, I mean, if that, if I got a fish that big consuming me and my foot goes in or my head goes in or my arm goes in or any part of my body goes in, are you not praying right then and there? I am. Help me, Lord! Help me, Lord! Right? This is how stubborn we can be. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was knocked out for a while. I don't know. But it's three days and three nights later, and yes, it's in order to, to lay groundwork for the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it's just this simple. Then he prayed. We are, of all people, we should be in every circumstance praying at the very outset of everything. But a lot of times we pray at the end. Because we've given up everything else that we think we can do, ousted all of our strength. We've already gone through every other element. There's nothing left, and now I guess we'll pray. 
and see how wrong that is. It's just wrong. Praying at the end is not as wise as praying immediately. Now, the Lord always delivers us, always graces us, always helps us. But the lesson here, just keeping it real, is don't wait three days being inside the fish and then start to pray. Pray when it starts, not as the last resort. Get that? All right, cool. We'll take a short break, then we'll come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break, we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Hey there, it's Amazing Jennifer, and I am helping out the David Spoon Experience. As you may know, I basically run the KAAM radio station. Amazing! And Dr. Dave is looking for a few good people to join and become representatives, ambassadors, and stewards of this here radio ministry. Now, you may be thinking, well, I'd love to get involved, but I'm not very qualified for ministerial positions. Well, the truth is that because you are a child of our Heavenly Father, that you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you seek to live by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have all you need to be a part of this ministry. But Jennifer, don't I need to be perfect? (laughs) No. Just go to hemustincrease.org. That's hemustincrease.org. Click on the three lines at the top right of the website, and then click on the Ambassadors Initiative link. Just fill out the form and we will reach out to you. But sorry, no parking tickets will be paid for you as an ambassador through this position. You are on your own with that. The David Spoon Experience. Again, Dr. Robert Jeffress. Doctor, are you there with us? I'm here with you, David. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here. I got to ask you this question. I'm, 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 you know, I, I get a little fiery, especially when uh, Christians are being accused of things that are uh, false, and that happens all the time, especially in the media. And I think you're, if you remember our very first time we ever talked, I told you how impressed I was with you that you are able to keep your uh, spirit steady. <laughs> well, I appreciate that so much. You're a good friend. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Here's the thing that drives me absolutely batty, which is where I need your help now. Uh, I understand this uh, situation with uh, with Tim Tebow. He was going to do a dedication for you. He got a lot of pressure, apparently, from the media. The media accused you of being uh, uh, homophobic and anti-Semitic, which for me, I mean— it was, it was, I guess when I first heard it, I was overwhelmed. First of all, anti-Semitic is a person who discriminates against or is prejudiced or hostile towards Jews. You've been on my show. Now, this is three time, and I'm as Jewish as they come. Yeah, well, David, I mean, the charge of anti-Semitic comes from saying that everyone, including Jews, must trust in Christ in order to go to heaven. Uh, That is hardly anti-Semitic. In fact, I have a Jewish friend in New York who called me this week. She's not a Christian, but she said, I don't understand all of this. said, I don't believe in the New Testament, but you do. You're simply saying what the New Testament says. And, you know, David, we've said before, you know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And I remind people, Jesus was not a Southern Baptist evangelist. He was a Jewish rabbi. And yet you look at what he said, what the Apostle Paul said, the Apostle Peter. Here are the three most prominent men of the New Testament, every one of them a devout Jew, and yet they said there's one way to God, and that's through faith in Christ. That is not anti-Semitic. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. I do want to point out, Rosalind brought up a great point I had mentioned about a sermon I had called uh, God Has a Better Pair of Sneakers. On our website, which I'm going to send you to in a minute, there is a bumper sticker that talks about God's sneakers. So just in case you want something that's really fun, it's available, and if you want it, we will get it to you for free because we're goofy. That's why. Here's your trivia question. Good call, Rosalind. Thank you for that. Uh, you have to finish uh, this se- this scripture from John chapter 15, verse 13. So for those who are looking it up, start looking it up. John 15, 13. Finish this scripture. Greater love has no man than this. 
Greater love has no man than this. What's the rest of that? John chapter 15, verse 13. If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. Also, you can text in 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david, at he must increase.org. I'm going to send you up to the website, and then I'm just going to tell you the way it is. The way it is is this way. We are alive and doing well. We're always doing well. It is well with our soul. But our finances are a little tight, and I just I just dislike it because it just like, because I don't want to sit there when we get to radio rent in a week or so and go, radio rent, radio rent, radio rent. I just can't stand doing that. I just wish we had, I wish I had a billion dollars so that I can never ask anybody for money and then just give people money like my whole life. That'd be fun. But in the reality check of the kingdom of God, what is important to us is also known to God, and we need the people that have those financial means to help. So if you can help, help. If you can't, I do not. There's not, nothing negative, zero, zero. You can enjoy every single thing. We will still buy you whatever we can. We'll still do whatever we can with it. But we could use a little help. Just keeping it real, just letting you know. Check it out, uh, the giving, plus the books, plus the bumper stickers, plus you can have a place to put your uh, prayer requests or praise reports on the website. Check it out at hemustincrease.org. Prayer request? Hemustincrease.org. Praise report? Hemustincrease.org. Looking to give to this ministry? Hemustincrease.org. Confused by what's happening right now? Hemustincrease.org. Hemustincrease.org. <laughs> Could have used one of those about three days ago. <laughs> it happens all the time. You say this, you go, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I know I'm the only person that goes through that. All right, somebody is ready to answer the trivia question, so we do want to give them that opportunity. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? It's uh, Brother Roger again. Hello, Brother Roger again. How art thou? Well, uh, see, I was thinking about the answer on um, my, um, I'm waiting for my strength, and I'm keeping my joy while I'm waiting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, Can you understand that one? <laughs> I, I do, but I still need you to answer the trivia question. <laughs> All right, greater. Well, you asked me how I was. I'm I'm waiting on my strength. Okay, greater love hath no man than this. That he laid down his life for his friends. Your strength is there. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very good. Very good. A very good way to do that. <laughs> Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. That is so. And then Jesus, in, in that definition, laid down his life even for his yeah, enemies. That's why I can him. be a friend in Jesus. That's right. That is exactly right. I'm a friend right. in Jesus. There's that an old right. song about that. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. I, I suggest that neither one of us try to sing okay. it for the day. Well, it's a joyful noise unto the Lord. Just remember that. So. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> oh, how you doing overall, brother? How are things? I've been praying for you. I want well, to know how you're doing. It's a, it's a, well, it's really and truly what I'm saying. We're waiting upon the Lord. We don't have any updates of yet, and we're uh, we're just going to wait upon the Lord. What the next step I'm going to make? We walk in love, and sometimes I want it to go at my pace, but God says no. We got to go at my pace. So I'm just walking along with the Lord at His pace. Whatever he decides, when he decides it, where he decides it, every time he's got me through everything that I've ever went through, he's got me through. So the waiting part is a tough part, but we're going to get through it. 
I know that we're going to get it because his promises are yes and amen. That's They're right. never slack. They're never slack. That is 100% correct and really well said. I mean, that is so true. The, the idea that, that I mean, the Lord has never been unfaithful. The waiting part can be difficult, yes, but the mm-hmm. wait is worth it because the mm-hmm. king of the universe makes it so. Right. And if you can truly, truly, it's a, it's a lot of work. Faith without works is dead. But it's a lot of work to give all your cares to him. You know, we, it takes work to give your cares to him because we keep, like I've said before, like a fishing pole, we keep reeling them cares back in. When we cast our cares upon him, we reel them back in. But if we would just not tie, not have any fishing line on that care and just throw it in the sea of forgetfulness, then we would be okay, but I'm I'm casting all my cares upon him and I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And and uh, the the man's report well I can't I always believe the man's report because most men are liars. But God is always true. Amen. Amen. In fact, I'll, uh, let everybody be a liar, but, but God, true. I mean, every man is a liar. I mean, that's just the truth. <laughs> that's what the scripture says. Good job. Let me pray over you. Let me pray over you, okay? Okay. Let's pray. Right. Father, right. let's do it. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you and praise you for our brother. Roger is such a blessing to us. And, Lord, I just, I just ask you to pour upon him such great peace as he is waiting in you. And he's just fighting his way through it, Lord. He's trying to cast it onto you. He's trying to work his way to laying it down, just saying it's all yours. And we have to fight to keep doing that, Lord. But while he's going through this process, the peace that passes understanding helps so much. And we ask you that you would grant your peace. In fact, Jesus, you're the Prince of Peace. So because you're the Prince of Peace and the authority of peace, we ask you to pour that into Roger's family and into Roger's mind and heart. And let them be strong in the waiting and grow in their confidence. We ask your blessing and your favor and good news because you are a God with a gospel. And we rejoice in that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. I, I would like to add what gives me joy is the knowing that you guys are there for us and that the audience is there for us, and that they're, they're praying for us. And I know that they're praying. We feel the prayers of the audience and you and, and my church that I go to. We're feeling the, their prayers, and I'm so thankful for all the prayers that are going out for us. And I'm talking about me and my wife as a unit, my household as a unit. And I just thank God for that you guys are there for us. I encourage everybody, if they can support you, please do support you because the ministry needs to continue on so we can all be bound together in one mind and one accord that we can pray, pray, keep praying for one another. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. Excellent call. All right. God bless. God bless you, too. Bye-bye. All right. Roger again. Phenomenal call. We'll have to rack that one. That's a really, really good call. All right. So uh, you guys know that. I mean, you know what's going on there. It's just and it, We just pray for one another, care for one another, take care of one another. Don't stop praying for Roger again. He's such a blessing. If he just blessed you, I mean, you, it's, it's in your heart. It's in your life. It's in your mind. Be a part of that that reciprocates by, by praying that God will bless and help him. Right? All right. All right, before I exit, I know we've got to exit, but we're going to have to do this just a little, little bit. I just want to make sure you understand this because I don't want to miss this last point or these two last points. One of these last points is Jonah 2, 7, and 9. I'm going to do it, so just listen. Jonah said this, While I was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you in your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. That which I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation is from the Lord. So 
this is important, and I, I'm not going to break it down because I don't have the time the way I want to, but it's very simple. As he is kind of fading out, Jonah's like, I remember the Lord. And his prayer is coming into the temple. And he's like, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go after vain idols. I'm not doing that. But what I am going to do, Lord, is I'm going to sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. This is a guy inside a fish with seaweed wrapped around his head, not sure if he's going to live or not, because there's no guarantee God's going to let him keep doing ministry. There's no guarantee in that. God could just say, you're done. I've had enough. That's up to the Lord, right? But he's he's going to instead take instead of taking this attitude of you know well boy isn't God you know lucky to have me, he's taking the attitude of I'm going to sacrifice to you the voice of thanksgiving because salvation is from you Lord. And even in the midst of being inside the fish with the seaweed wrapped around his head, he's giving thanks to God. And people are like, you can't give thanks all the time. Dude, if you can give thanks in this moment right here, there is no other time that you can argue you can't give thanks. He's inside a fish. He's probably going to die. He's fainting. He's losing it. But he's responding with the voice of thanksgiving because he knows salvation is from the Lord. Isn't that awesome? You look at these things like, wow. That's some cool stuff. All right, we'll take our break. Then we'll come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. I was uh, driving down I-30 yesterday, and it was stop-and-go traffic. There was, uh, I guess, an accident up ahead. So I was putting along at uh, 20 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, and this little sports car would, would speed up and get right beside me, and then he'd fall back. You know, just kind of we're shuffling back and forth. He'd go and I'd go and he'd go and I'd go. And I just was watching out of the corner of my eye and just kind of mindlessly driving at 20 miles an hour. And then all of a sudden, I hear this little beep, 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 beep. And I said, "Uh uh-oh, what did I do? And I looked out of the corner of my eye, and he's he drove right up next to me. He had his windows rolled down, and he gave me a big old thumbs up. And I said, What's he giving me a thumbs up for? I was kind of expecting when you have somebody honking at you, you're expecting something else, you know. And uh, and then I realized I have that bumper sticker on ah. that it's uh, it's you no know, um, God created the universe. Uh, he can write a book, and uh, and then he just sped off. Not well. He he slowly drove off at <laughs> twenty miles an hour. <laughs> But I, I just thought that was neat. That's the first time that anybody's really gives a thumbs up for a bumper sticker. Usually, it, people that have bumper stickers, it's to hold their bumper on their car. But that uh, is I just awesome. wanted to share that story. That is an awesome story. First of all, it's really good that he gave you a thumbs up and didn't use any other yeah. fingers. So let's just say that's for sure. And then the other part about that is that that's cool because whether he's listening to the show or not, he agrees with you, knows that that's true. Hey, look, God created the universe. The dude can write a book. Let's just get that. Well, let's get that squared away. You know. <laughs> yes, and you know what? He might be listening to the story um, to the. To the uh, radio now. That's exactly right. What a blessing. That's cool. And we do have those bumper stickers. So, no, we only have so many, but we were, as we get this, we're going to do an ambassador program, and that'll give people an opportunity to put the bumper sticker on their car if they want to, and nobody wants you to do anything to your car you don't want to. But I really, really appreciate you sharing that story. And that is a great story. And see, every time we're on traffic, we think something bad's going to happen. Instead, Hey, there was something good that happened. Somebody standing with you in the faith, perhaps a fellow listener saying, right on. Just right. That's the right target. I bet that blessed you at the moment, didn't it? It sure did. Yeah. It sure did. That's cool. Yeah. That's a great story. And I love that. Oh, good job. <laughs> good, good job in being an ambassador just by sharing that bumper sticker and just by proclaiming the truth. Some people will read that and they might go, oh, I don't know, but it sure challenges a lot of people, doesn't it? It's like, oh, you got to think that through, don't you? The David Spoon Experience. Oh, welcome back. To the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAMN 770, the truth station here in Texas. 
Wow, what a show. Great calls by Nancy. Great calls by, by everybody. Great, great call by Roger again. Just wonderful. All right, here's your last trivia question. And if you don't get this right, well, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> That's what. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. Who said that even all the hairs in our head are numbered by God? Who said even all the hairs in our head are numbered by God? By the way, uh, from Jeanette, she was just sharing that she has been doing better. We've been praying for Jeanette, and she has been doing better, and that's very, 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 very cool. Very glad to hear that, Jeanette. Uh, but who said now, okay, Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, who said even all the hairs on our head are numbered by God? If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. That's 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. As well, you can send an email, david, at hemustincrease.org. Meantime, we are going to do history. Let's go living in the past. Let's go living in the past. All right, real quickly on history, I do think it's funny because yesterday was, uh, for in Australia, it was Cupcake Day, but then they also say today in Australia is Cupcake Day, and I'm getting the impression that maybe every day in Australia is just Cupcake Day, and uh, that might be the only good thing about Australia right there is that every day is Cupcake Day. That's that's good. <laughs> hey, cupcakes are great, so yeah. I'm good with I mean, that. I'm good I'm with a, every day right. being Cupcake Day. Absolutely agree. Uh, a couple things you do, don't know and I will share with you. Number one, it's National Bratwurst Day. Love Bratwurst. That's awesome. Uh, 1930 on this day. So 96 years ago on this day, the first color cartoon was made with sound. How about that? Do you know what it was called? Fiddlesticks. I mean, that's a trivia question for worth a million dollars, right? I mean, who would know that? The first color cartoon with sound. What was it called? Fiddlesticks! Oh, you win a million dollars! Okay, anyway. Uh, so I thought that was good. And then last, and then we'll uh, get into the teach, but it's National Tell-A-Joke Day. And so I'll tell my very quick uh, old joke, but I love it. It's a classic joke. Here it is. Keeping it simple. All right? The hunter was out hunting, and he was shooting, and he clipped a bear in the ear. The bear starts running after him, and the guy starts running away, realizing he's in a lot of danger. He gets to a tree, he climbs up to the tree, and he says, Lord, please, 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 please let this be a Christian bear. And at that moment, he hears the bear say, Lord, bless this food to my body in Jesus' name. Okay. There you go. How's that? That's pretty good. Huh? All right, your trivia question. Uh, come on, folks. you got to laugh a little. Who said all the hairs on your head are numbered? Uh, by God, and we know who said that. You guys should know who said that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. You've only got a minute or so to call in. Otherwise, I'll just tell it. In the meantime, I'm going to finish off this little teaching on Jonah, which I think is fascinating and amazing. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 through 2. Here it is. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the proclamation which I am going to tell you. So if you remember, in the very beginning of, of Jonah's adventure, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, Nineveh the great city, and proclaim to it. And, Nona, and Jonah ran the other direction. So now, after he's gone through this experience, eaten by the fish, Right? True story. Not and Jesus quotes and makes him, acknowledges Jonah as a prophet. Poor Jonah. Bad theology got him going in the bad direction. Wrong things, wrong all that, wrong all that. And then he's like in the fish, and then he's like, okay. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to give Thanksgiving no matter what the situation. Here it is again. So the Lord's presenting it again. And it says in Jonah 3, 1 through 2, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Here we go again. Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it proclamation, which I'm going to tell you. Why does God allow you and I to go through trials more than once? This is why. 
this is why. Because after a certain amount of time and a certain amount of trials, a certain amount of growing up, we get more responsive. We're like, I want you to, yes, I'm going. <laughs> why? Well, I don't want to spend three more days in a fish with seaweed wrapped around my head. I've, I've just really, I've, I've had enough. And the little sardines and all the other things, I'm just getting tired of it. Here's the point that I'm trying to make. The point is sometimes the Lord lets us go through the same thing multiple times because it takes us multiple times to get to the right response. I'm not sure why that's even bizarre. All of us know it's true. After all, we pray this. Lord, I want patience, and I want it now. You know, it's like, okay. Sometimes it takes a while to work it into our system. What's a nice way to say it? To massage it into the system, right? Sometimes the Lord has to, you know, put a little anointing of the Holy Spirit on us and massage it in piece by piece so that we're like, yes, Lord. Because that's what we got to do. We got to say, yes, Lord. And if it takes that long to get there, okay, well, maybe you got to get swallowed by a fish. I don't know. I mean, I hope not, but... I think for me, I've gone through, I, I think the top 20 trials I've gone through, if not 500 times, then at least 200 times. And it's like, I'm really slow. That's why I think I'm a lot, lot like Jonah. Like, what? What? Listen, we're more responsive. That's why, the God, that's why the Lord allows these kind of things going on in our lives more than once so that we'll get it. Okay? All right, cool. All right, who said, Matthew 10, 30, even all the hairs on our head were numbered? Of course, that was our Lord Jesus Christ who said that, that every hair on your head is numbered. Here's a quick question for you. How many hairs are on your head right now? What? You don't know? God does. That's how much he knows about you. Ah, awesome. All right, folks, you've been listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, taking a 70 and one half hour break. Then we'll come back. More insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. Can't stand the skill, can't stand the shame. It may be false, but it feels the same. So I punish myself, I go down to the Views and opinions expressed in the preceding program are those of its participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors.